I'm David S. Dawson from the Intellectual Podcast, a show that spotlights creatives from all walks of life. Part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other incredibly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Welcome to episode 224 of Better Podcasting. On this show, we learn to accept when our podcast is good enough. In this week's Better Podcasting download, we use our voice to remove background noise. And finally, in our Better Podback section, we talk about how you saved our podcast. Lauren, start the show now. Welcome to Better Podcasting. With a combined history of over a thousand episodes and starting as early as 2008, we are hobby podcasters through and through, just like you. That's why we are different. We minimize the money talk so that you can focus on building a better podcast. Here are the hosts for the show, Stephen John Drew and Stargate Pioneer. Welcome to an all new episode of Better Podcasting. I am Stephen John Drew and I am pleased to say the man who accepted that I would have to be good enough to be his co-host, Espy, is here this week. Funny enough, we were going to discuss that and decided not to this podcast, but you brought it up. So yeah, you're you're just good enough for me, Stephen. You're good enough. But we have a great show. We've toiled away at the show notes for tonight. We're really looking forward to getting this episode in the can because it's been two weeks since we recorded a numbered Better Podcasting episode. By the way, if you didn't know this, we do uh, on the off weeks, we do stream a live Q&A to geeks.live where we chat about this, that, and the other of podcast related content, uh, taking questions and just talking about our previous week. So if you want to check that out, go to uh, geeks.live every other Tuesday, but you know what you should do? Just Tuesdays, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, come to geeks.live because if we're not doing that Q&A show, we'll be recording this show live and you can see us make all sorts of mistakes. So every Tuesday, we've got some form of live content for you unless we have to, by chance, change that date or skip a week or whatever. But I also want to say right now, betterpodcasting.com, head on over there because by the time this episode drops, you will be able to finally download that back catalog of the live Q&A because I, I have wow. been dragging my heels on that, trying to get that together, uh, which is just pure laziness, if I'm being honest, because of the fact that it's unedited. The Q&A portion that will be posted to an audio podcast, it's just the rip of the live Q&A. Same with the video. So I don't know why I dragged my heels. Um, I wasn't trying to hit any specific marker number. I wasn't trying to get so many episodes in the can before we released iTunes or anything like that. It was just pure Stephen John Drew patented laziness. I think we got to talk about how just a raw podcast is just good enough to get out there the week that you record it, like right after. Yeah, you know, I have been doing television podcasts for years, for eight years now, between Starling Tribune, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., and anything else I've guested on, whether it's Gallifrey Public Radio, Walking The Walking Dead, you know, Radio Free Woodward. What what did you guys call that? A Walking Dead podcast that you uh, did? It went by two names. It went by WTWD Radio Free Woodbury, and then it went to Walking The Walking Dead podcast, because that was the name okay. of the website, was Walking so The Walking I've Dead. Been, regardless, I've been doing this for quite some time. And the key to do a TV podcast or TV review podcast is when the episode comes out, then you record your episode and then you release that right away. And that's how you're supposed to get the maximum number of downloads because everybody wants to talk about it the next day. I don't do that. So maybe I need to be good enough. You know, maybe we should talk about having a good enough podcast. We here at Better Podcasting are both big advocates for making your podcast the best that it can be. After all, that's one of the big reasons that we created Better Podcasting to help hobby podcasters get better at podcasting. But part of making your podcast better is managing your time wisely so that you can focus your time 
in the right places to make your podcast better. And sometimes that means that things are just good enough and it's time to move on to the next thing in your podcasting world. In recent, we've actually both had some situations in our podcasting endeavors where we've had to remind ourselves of this fact that sometimes things are just good enough. And we thought that this would make a good topic to share some of the ways that we think that it is worthwhile to just accept the fact that it's good enough and move on to that next point within your podcasting. SP, why don't you kick us off here? Let's talk about the biggest area that we think it's important to accept that things are just good enough. And that is with starting your podcast, getting that first episode out there. So often we see people just dragging their heels to start their podcast. In fact, we've touched on this a few times because we're very passionate about it. Often we see people take forever to launch their podcast, which eventually leads to them not launching and just letting the project fade so it never sees the light of day. One of the most common holdbacks that we've seen over the years is because podcasters miss the opportunity to accept things are just good enough to launch. Let's go over some examples of that and let's start with artwork. While it's always great to pack a powerful punch with your visuals when you launch, sometimes you just have to accept it's good enough and roll with it. For example, perhaps you've tried several different designs for your artwork and you still feel it's missing something. Rather than get fixated on getting it perfect, that one logo perfect, pick the one that you think best fits your podcast concept and then move on. You can still continue to work on it and swap it out once you're ready but at least it'll be done and out there. What's the next thing that we would give as an example, Stephen? Let's talk about episode one itself. And we're not talking about Star Wars episode one. That wasn't good enough. Uh, we're talking about getting your first podcast episode out. We're big advocates of trying out your podcast concept before you actually launch. It gives you really an opportunity to try out different delivery methods, different things, and just find your footing before you actually release a recorded episode. But the thing is, episode one is always not going to be that great when you look back on it years from now. So we think that you should really set yourself a maximum number of attempts or maximum number of recordings where you try that episode one out before you decide, okay, it's time to release it and roll with it and move on. We personally are big fans of the three number. Three is probably too many, but if you've done three, just maybe that's time to accept that that third one is good enough and move on, and then you can get going. Again, sometimes trying out your first episode is a good way just to get comfortable with the concept and just find what delivery flow or format works, but give yourself that maximum number. Another example is the website itself that you are going to have as your landing page for your podcast. Websites can be incredibly time consuming, even for those webmasters that know what the heck they're doing. I do not count myself as one of them. Some podcasts are continually changing their website for years before it develops into the static product that they are comfortable with. If your website is holding you back from your podcast creation and the development is just churning and churning, perhaps it's better to devote your time to content creation instead. That next five plugins on your WordPress site look great, but if you're not publishing an episode because of it, look at slimming down your website or perhaps even going with a podcast host provider webpage or landing page just to start with and then get your podcast out because your true product is not your website. It is your podcast, especially for hobby podcasters. Consider that trade-off of time spent maintaining and developing your website versus time spent creating and promoting your show. Another example is the video elements of your show. Now, we understand that the majority of our listeners are audio-only content creators. However, if you are creating supplemental or perhaps a parallel video product to your show, like audio productions, video productions can and do evolve over time. We wouldn't expect a hobby podcaster to have the same complimentary video production that rivals the video production of This Is Us, Game of Thrones, The Martian, or The Shawshank Redemption. It's going to be a hobby podcast or a hobby podcast video or a hobby YouTube channel. 
Assuming your audio production is your primary creation, the complementary video production is just that, complementary. And if your video production is your primary focus, we'd argue that you'd have a YouTube channel and not necessarily a podcast, but the video elements on the video show do in fact enhance a video production. We get that. But if the video is just good enough to release and your primary delivery is your audio podcast, focus on your podcast and just ensure the video is good enough and not obsess about those video elements. Things like listenable audio, some sort of moving video, aka not a static image the entire time, the entire video, something that's in focus with decent lighting and no shaky cam. Those are the things that you should focus on if it's a complimentary video project rather than getting enhanced into the video production elements and prevent your audio product from getting out there. So that's just another example. If you're doing a complimentary video show like we do here on Better Podcasting, don't obsess about the video elements. Just get it good enough to get the project out. The next thing that we want to talk about is the opposite of video. It's sound. And we want to talk a little bit about sound design. Podcasts by the likes of NPR or Gimlet or experienced hobby podcasters like Anomaly Podcast or Adventures in Aurelia or audio podcasts like The Phenomenon or Girl in Space all have fantastic audio design. They've got background music, sound effects, wonderful transitions, and maybe a dedicated theme. Basically, they have all sorts of audio elements to take you through that podcast. Those podcasts do sound great to the point that you can smell the ambiance that they are making. From personal experience, though, uh, placing the right music or effect at the right time can be incredibly difficult to do, especially if you're looking to change it up every episode. Finding the right music or effects to do this, purchasing it, and integrating it into your production can take many hours, days, or weeks. It also can get very expensive, especially if you're changing it out regularly. Now, SP dabbled with this previously on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Longbox Edition, where you're trying to uh, add some music to this. And we here at Better Podcasting do advocate building up towards this because you can build this library over time and you'll be able to instead, as you're building up this library, focus on creating content for your podcast. The sound design is awesome, but you don't want to get to the point that it is hampering your production. Again, it might be good enough at this time with this limited library that you have if you are thinking about doing this. I know with Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Longbox Edition SP, you kind of stayed mostly with the same sort of core elements originally, and then you added a you changed things up a little bit, and you found a format that ended up really working for you in the long run. I ended up with multiple background tracks that I could play underneath each speaker, depending on what their object or what the content was. If they were talking about a specific comic book, I would tend to use that track underneath them. And if they were talking about another comic book, I would use another track underneath them. I still own all the tracks and I could restart Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Longbox up again, but I got those tracks over time and I didn't start with them. And it took about two years to get to the point where I had multiple choices for each show. And if I was going to do that and change up those tracks every week. First of all, it would cost me probably about $80 a week. So for a hobby podcaster, that's just ridiculously expensive. And for a regular professional podcast, it might not be, but for a hobby podcaster, we're going to go with that's expensive. And it would be a bunch of time. If that was the only podcast I was doing, it was just a quick eight to 12 minute long podcast. If that was the only podcast I was doing. I could devote a lot of time to do that every week, but I've just, can't do that for the amount of podcasts that I was doing. And if you have like an hour long talking head podcast, like we do on legends of shield, like we do on going geek, imagine putting an undertone on that. First of all, it's not the style for going geek, but just imagine doing that. That just would be incredibly difficult for an hour long show, putting it underneath them. And I know that Damien who listens to our show that does adventures in Aurelia, he does 
sound underlays to that. And it just must, I, I, I need to ask him how long he has spent on each episode to do that. It's just got to be a, a lot of time. You know, early days of the Guinea Geek show and back in the comic uh, book podcast I used to do wasn't that degree, but I want to give an example on how time consuming this could be and where I accepted that it was good enough to do it a different way was I used to, at the beginning with the intro um, change out quotes that were said for each host because we had a thing that would be like, it's host A, and then there'd be a little quote from them. And host B, that was back when podcasts were very long and you could do that. And and I, I would always look for something funny as I was listening, and I would, I would take that clip and I would save it so I could use it in the future. And I tried to switch it out every single time. And it just became so daunting in the end that it was just like, I was struggling to find things that would be short enough, but funny enough to go in at the beginning and then change it out and be conscious of the fact that I've used this recently or whatever. And it was a huge project. And that was just for just the beginning, the intro. So eventually I just went, no, you know what? I'll just make somebody have a quote for 200 episodes and that, that'll be it. That's good enough. <laughs> Starling Tribune is another example. The last couple of years, I actually tried to change Stephen Amell's quote as Oliver Queen at the beginning of the intro. I tried to change that with every episode and it just got to be so time consuming because I'd have to listen to, or I'd have to watch the episode and I would have to somehow record the audio bit that I would want from it. I would have to identify it, then record it and then stuff it in the intro. It just took a long time for that. And while that's neat, and if you're focusing on that, you can do it. If it's just good enough to have a quote for a season, go with a quote for a season and move on. If you want to get good about it and, and you have the time for it, go ahead. But remember, good enough. And what Stephen and I were just talking about was the intro to the podcast. It wasn't the actual podcast. So that's sound design. Stephen, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the audio quality. Audio quality, one of our favorite things to talk about here on Better Podcasting. And that's because we think it's important that your podcast is listenable. For us, listenable, the term listenable, encompasses a bunch of different things. However, the general summary of what we think listenable is, is that your podcast should be able to be listened to by someone without being distracted by a bunch of other things like outside variables uh, with uh, background noise or mouth noises, or clicks, or desk bangs, whatever it is. We think that your podcast should be able to be listened to without the, these distractions and having your listeners' attention focus on these distractions instead. But some people spend a ton of time trying to finesse every little detail of their audio. Some people will cycle endlessly through new microphones just trying to change that sound to be perfect. Others may try to change hardware settings consistently on things like their DBX286 preamp. And some may even change hardware consistently like their preamp just to get that little extra sound or something that they think will impact their sound. When you're trying to dial in your audio quality, you should consider the trade-offs of the pros and cons of all of these ideas. For example, perhaps you're mostly happy with the sound of your microphone, but it's still not exactly what you want, and you're considering a new microphone that's several hundred dollars. I'll admit, I am in that boat right now. I am considering an RE20, which is roughly about $500 with everything that goes with it, maybe a little bit more. So is your audio good enough with what you have? Is it something that you can live with and put that money elsewhere? Yeah, okay, then maybe you don't need that new microphone. And you can just live with what you got and publish your podcast with what you got. Or perhaps you're using a piece of equipment that isn't quite putting out the right sound and you're thinking of adding some outboard gear to fix the problem. What sort of gain do you think you're going to get by it? And meaning gain to the podcast, not gain to the microphone. And is it worth the trade off that you may face by adding more gear? More gear means more potential issues. And it also means more space that you have to devote to the gear. If you've got a pretty compact setup currently, is it worth adding extra gear or taking up more space? Or is your audio as it is good enough as it is and you can live with it? I'll just give you a personal example. Just recently, we were talking in the Discord server about my setup or any setup and how you can get your audio live like we do here on Better Podcasting. I threw in my 
diagram, my audio interface diagram in there. And this is what I use. It's very complex. And I don't expect that most hobby podcasters would do that. And everybody in the discord was like, yeah, that's really complex or, Ooh, that's really cool or whatever. Yeah. It, it's really cool. I will tell you that it's taking up a ton of space. So when I created studio B and studio C in my house, a couple of months ago, I actually went down to a very streamlined podcast setup basically. And it works just fine, except for I have issues with the audio, which is why I have all the audio gear in front of me. So can you do it? with a lesser extensive amount of gear? Absolutely. I've done it before on mobile podcasting. I've got two other studios in my house right now for telework that work just fine for podcasting. Yes, you can do it with slimmer amounts of gear. And if that's good enough for your podcast to get it out, don't put yourself in a bind, spend thousands of dollars of gear, and then spend months and months trying to set it up and then have wiring heck going on around your pod. It's just going to bog you down. Just get your podcast out. That's your first priority. Get the podcast out. But let's move on to the editing process of your show. Are you spending endless amount of hours editing your show? Are you trying to remove every single um and ah out of your show? What about every single gap that you've got? There is such a thing as over editing. And sometimes you should just accept that what you have is good enough. And you don't need to take that fourth, fifth, sixth, 14th pass on your show. Sometimes you're good just to accept what you've got and move on. Think about conversations you have with people every day. Now also relate those conversations to broadcasts that you might hear or see elsewhere like radio shows, talk shows, etc. The odds are often you hear some consistent changes within speech patterns that are there um, across other uh, platforms such as people saying uhs or ums or having gaps. When you remove all of these little nuances, sometimes the delivery can actually sound unnatural, especially if you remove all the silences. There's some people who just truncate silence everything and it sounds horrendous. It's worth considering that people are listening to this and they expect a sort of natural speech pattern in a certain regard. As well, sometimes people are listening on more than just one time speed. And when you listen on faster speeds, a lot of these nuances are lost. So it could be good enough to publish as you currently have it without taking yet another editing pass at your podcast. Of course, we are advocates of editing your podcast. We think that that can be very beneficial unless you're specifically posting a podcast that you have built as a live podcast that is a live podcast Q&A. Again, tie back to betterpodcasting.com. Uh, but if you've missed a big section, yeah, take that out. Like if you, there's a big mistake that you've had, fix that. If you are listening and you've missed that the first four times, but the odds are you've caught those big mistakes at least on the second time. Probably you got them on the first. So maybe accept it's okay and move on and go focus on your next episode. The key is to be listenable, engaging, or at least not boring in the cadence of the show. And that should be your focus, not necessarily taking out every single um or space in the show. Another area that some people might want to draw the line and call good enough is with the show notes or the publishing information, you know, what you actually put in when you publish the podcast. There are some podcasts that spend a ton of time making the show very explorable. They SEO optimize everything and they throw it on the website, they throw it in the show notes, they throw it in the ID3 tags of the podcast itself. They spend a ton of time building their episode notes, adding transcripts, making it basically explorable and searchable. However, as a hobby podcaster, I'm going to submit you don't have the time to do all that. A full time podcaster does, a full time podcaster with a staff does. You don't because it can be very grueling and time consuming work. Instead, what is good enough? We at Better Podcasting think your notes should have things that summarize the episode, references to links that are discussed during the show, and also provide details on the key points of your show. Also, don't forget any acknowledgments you are legally obligated to include 
for any material that you've covered during your podcast or perhaps music that you've played. Essentially, have the things that might get people to your podcast as they search for the subject matter on Google and keep you legally safe. But it goes beyond just the core content of your podcast. You should also consider what good enough means in regards to other areas of your podcast endeavors. Let's start with your hosting provider. And we're talking about podcast media hosting provider here. If you're looking at a hosting provider, you should consider all the trade-offs of features versus cost versus offerings. For example, perhaps you're happy with your media host, but there's another one that is offering an easier way to send your podcast to a few different locations. However, they cost much more than what you're paying now. Is this the only benefit you're getting? Is your current provider good enough? But it could be more than that as well. Other things that could be good enough include organizational tools, conferencing services, editing software itself. Ultimately, when considering upgrading these services, you should consider what the benefit is and if what you have is good enough or not. Even if there is no cost difference, consider that the time that is involved with changing a service is the time really worth it compared to what you have now. It's a trade off, and getting your podcast out should always be your primary consideration. In summary, there's a saying that I've heard from my Voices of Defiance co-host, and I heard it from him way before he was my co-host on Voices of Defiance. He said, done and out or out and done, depending on what day of the week it was, done and out is always better than unfinished and incomplete or incomplete in your head or whatever. It was Sean, by the way, from Voices of Defiance. Words to that effect. Instead of searching for perfection, search for good enough. Start your podcast before it is never a show to begin with. You just got to get it out. Publish that next episode and move on to the next task if you have a podcast already. As long as your show is listenable, has good content, that's the path to being a hobby podcaster because actually doing a show is tons more fun than just preparing to do the next episode forever. This is the Better Podcasting Download. I want to give a tip of my hat to the wonderful Cody Goff, former guest of the show, Cody Goff, famous Discovery podcast personality, Cody Goff of Curiosity Daily. He uh, turned me over to something this past weekend um, called NVIDIA RTX Voice. If you weren't familiar with this, NVIDIA did create a, I think it's in beta, a plugin that leverages the NVIDIA RTX GPU the graphics card, uh, and the capabilities within that in order to remove background noise from your broadcast or chat or whatever. Yes, a video card creator created stuff to enhance your audio. This is just like perfect timing with everybody being on these crappy Zoom meetings with all of these noises. They have dropped this. But the thing is, there's actually a way that at this current time, the install that you, that's currently out there, you can actually skirt it and you can get it to work on GTX graphics cards. And so this is a piece of software that, that you run it. And essentially what it does is it's, it works two ways. Either it will take the input into your computer. So like, let's say that you have a AT2005 microphone plugged in by, via USB to your computer. You can go in and you can have it so that it will take that microphone and it basically inject itself in between that and your computer. And so then what happens is it takes that signal, cleans it up, and then in like Audacity or you're streaming, so XSplit or OBS or wherever, Discord, you then can select the NVIDIA RTX uh, audio as the audio input. And so then it's cleaning it all up for you. And then from the other side of things is it works on an output. So if you are plugged in, let's say you have a, a head, headphones plugged into your um, computer and you're on a Skype call or whatever, you can actually clean up that participant. So that person, that audio that you're hearing, not your own audio, but that person that is coming through your computer. So like if I'm talking to SP over Skype, I can have it so that his audio is cleaned up to me. So it, it, it does use AI, and I have to say, we did a couple of raw tests, and there will be a demo on betterpodcasting.com uh, later this week, and should, in theory, as well be out there by the time this episode drops officially. 
just a little bit of a demo. It's pretty impressive. I got to say, it's pretty impressive for what it is. Uh, it definitely has its shortcomings. Uh, I My first test very quickly, quickly proved that by having a speaker playing near the microphone, you could kind of hear this low level distortion that was in there. But let's just do a little bit of an example here. And so we're going to do a little bit of an example. And what I'm going to do is um, this is something that the broadcast audience will be able to see now. And if you hear the audio degrade a little bit, um, it's because I'm going to be using um, the not ideal audio path that I usually record in order to do this. So I'm going to do a little bit of a demo here and I'm going to bang on my desk with it off and then bang on my desk with it on. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, I'm talking to SP right now, banging on my desk, and you can probably hear that very, very clearly. I'm talking on my desk, I'm talking, 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 bang, bang, bang on my desk, bang on my desk, bang, 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 bang. Oh, all right, all right, we get it. You get it? Okay, so now let's go ahead and put on the sound reduction. Neither of us is running an RTX card, by the way. And I'm going to bang on my desk. I'm banging on my desk. For the audio listener, you might have to trust us on this. Uh, banging on my desk. Banging, 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 banging on my desk. I'm banging, 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 banging on my desk right now. I'm currently banging on my desk the same amount I did before. And uh, again, you'll have to trust me, us on this likely uh, if it all works well. So there you go. Uh, that's the demo right there of the uh, removal. And... I'm, I'm, there's no gag here. There's no gag. If everything worked well, there's no gag. The problem is I can't actually hear it back. I can't hear it back, so I can't say for sure. So, um, uh, yeah. It's an interesting technology, and I really enjoy this uh, potentially being better in the future. And we'll see. And if this is, if it does work out, if they do artificial intelligence and machine learning, to be able to compute the redu background reduction as you are talking, then it might be a game changer to the point, and I don't know this, and I don't recommend it right now, but it might actually okay condenser microphones. <laughs> I know. We'll see. It, it could be quite the game changer. And I have to say as well that the other thing that I think is worth considering is the fact that this is all done on the fly. This this is right now a, a real broadcast. Like that wasn't post processed. That was me using the software right there and then to do it. I I did not use post like I I did my usual post processing in the posted version of this, but that was being done and and fixed on the fly. If this technology is made into a VST where it can struggle, it can it can work a little bit not on the fly. Usually things that are done after the fact have more oomph than just being able to do it like raw and real right there. That could really be amazing in a post-production scenario as well. So, you know, I have to say, based off the test that I've done right now, I am uh, I am thinking of, of implementing this somehow in my broadcast stream for the live broadcast. I, I still like hardware recording, so I won't be able to do it for the actual posted audio, but... I'm thinking about it. There's just a couple of hurdles that I need to do. If there is a lot of noise, there seems to be a little bit of a, sometimes a lot of distortion, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, what were your thoughts, Espy? Curious about what I'm hearing. I'm wondering again about the audio degradation that you just talked about. And I don't know if I'm going to use it or not because I don't have that powerful of a graphics card. I've got a 1060. I'm thinking about upgrading. This might actually be the reason to upgrade, but I, I just, I don't know. It, it's interesting. It's, it's, and if you have a smaller setup where you don't have a good graphics card, I don't think that you can use this. Like if you got a little laptop and it doesn't have that massive amount of uh, GPU, or if you have a Mac, I don't know if this is Mac compatible or not. I don't think it is, but is it? Uh, well, Macs don't generally right now do a lot with NVIDIA. So NVIDIA technically does make some Mac stuff um, before everybody tells me I'm wrong. But in general, they're more in the AMD camp. So what we're seeing right now is that this is only for NVIDIA cards, whether it's RTX or not. And it is not for any other card. So, yeah, that's a limitation. But 
it's pretty cool because we've all got these massive uh, us gamers out there and I, I put myself in that spot just because i have a graphics card that i use for podcasting but the gaming cards out there the gpus out there if you've got one this is a, a great thing to go ahead and use and i know a lot of gamers podcast there's a lot of video gamers that podcast so this this could be cool I, again, worry about the voice quality, so I'd have to do an A-B comparison, and I have not been able to do that with myself yet. The other thing that I think is worth thinking about as well, because we sometimes mingle into YouTube territory and back and forth, is the fact that there are live streamers that this will absolutely benefit that aren't trying to put out an, odd ca an audio medium like we do. And think about that those gamers. It'll be interesting for sure. This is where we here at Better Podcasting turn the show over to you as we run through some of your feedback. We call this segment Better Podback. Oh, I screwed up. SP, boy, did I screw up. You did. I'm not blaming you, by the way, and I'm not putting you to pasture, out to pasture or anything like that. You've done a phenomenal job of producing this show for 222 episodes. 223rd, you had some problems. Yeah. Uh, so episode 223, long story short, I uh, published a version where we were talking all over each other in the middle of it. And that's just because I screwed up the edit. So I always um, edit uh, and I, I preview the video version rather than the audio because then I'm making sure I didn't screw up the video. And what happened was I rendered the video version on a different day than the audio version. And so somehow... I hadn't done much with my computer, but somehow I accidentally shifted a little clip in the middle. So we multi-track this. So ISP's on one track, I'm on another. Somehow I took, I think it was my track, and I just shifted it slightly over. So in one portion of the middle, we ended up over-talking. And we had the save, saver of our podcast, Patrick Keller, tweet us and say, I assume you guys know by now that there's some phasing slash overlapping issues in the second half of the show. And this was only a couple hours after I posted. So I was able to get in there, fix it, and then post again. And some of you got two versions of it and possibly three. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but for, for sure, some of you got two versions because of the fact that um, when I realized this, I thought, well, I better republish the episode as a new episode. I'll take down the old one because people might have had that. And then on the second one, I put the same title, but it put brackets corrected. So that if someone was looking at it, they would probably ignore the first one or maybe listen to it and find out where it all went wrong. And uh, yeah, that's my fault. I just, uh, I screwed up. So I apologize, but thank you to Patrick for saving us. There's multiple ways to do this, by the way. You could just replace the file, but then, then there's the, in our case, whatever it was, 100, 175 people that had already downloaded it that would have the original and they'd be like, oh, it's the original. It's all screwed up. And then you'd have to say, yeah, well, yeah, I'll have to delete it and redownload it or start it again, refresh, or start it again, depending on whether you're downloading or streaming it. So that's one way. Another way is to actually pull the episode off by uh, deleting it you know, or in Libsyn, you can put it in draft mode and then publishing an entirely new episode, which is what Steven did. And I have done it both ways before in this particular way, because it had been so long since we actually published the episode that I said, okay, yep, that's the right way to do it for this one is actually produce a corrected version. So people would know. And then in a few years, we could take that corrected version out the, you know, of the title. We can actually edit that and it'll just be the I will leave it forever as a sign that I screwed up. That will be there because nope. people learn through us. So they know that we make mistakes too. <laughs> okay. So that was two of the episodes. The third episode was not our fault. No. So when I actually posted the first version, the screwed up version, I went through and in Libsyn, I posted all the stuff because the show is hosted on Libsyn. We went and uh, I went and I put all the information in there. I filled out the social area where it tweets automatically. I filled out all the information, uploaded the episode, and I hit publish. To which when I went back to the main dashboard, I noticed, oh, wait a minute, there's two episodes there. Somehow it doubled the episode. I don't know what happened. So it doubled the episode. And when I went in, it was weird. The, the media was missing from the second post, but everything else was there. The, the Twitter post, 
all the other variables, they were all there and it double tweeted. It actually, the auto plugin tweeted both things and both of them linked back to the same MP3 file. So I don't know. I, I don't know what happened there, but potentially you got three episodes of better podcasting this week if if that's the way it worked out. And uh, two of them were broken. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't reached out to Libsyn to figure out what happened, honestly, because of everything else that happened. We Just the corrected file is up there and, and that's it. If we had an issue with the original post a little bit longer, we would approach them. But if it happens again, and I've published multiple episodes of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. since it happened, it has not happened to me. So until it happens again, I'm not going to bring it up with Libsyn. So thank you very much again to Patrick Keller at Big Seance on the Twitters, you saved our butts. We thank you very much for that. Also, we got kind of a kudos or at least an acknowledgement because of what we were talking about on YouTube and the fact that YouTube can go in and it's the whole thing where people can claim copyright on your video and stuff like that. Well, we had at Dennis Combs on Twitter post us and he said winning the battle of the bots he actually won uh, against a copyright claim on his youtube video he uh, accredited us and and said uh, winning it so congratulations i'm glad you won it and there's all sorts of stuff going on with that Stephen, you have anything more you want to say about the copyright youtube issue oh i'm glad you won that there have been a fair share of um people and bots claiming things that were not correct. Uh, I don't know the details for sure on this. This could have been the auto, um, the, the one where the copyright holder has that, but you have to submit evidence that you purchased the license. But there also are people who go and and falsely claim. So in any case, since you, it sounds like you were entitled to this, I'm glad that you were able to get this solved. We also had a on our Discord server, a post by Steph Fuscio, who is moving, I believe, tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to hearing back from her when she actually gets moved. She posted and said, what a coincidence uh, between asking the chair question and watching your thanks video. I ended up buying a gaming chair, I, I think. And she bought this chair on Amazon.de, which is Germany's version of Amazon. And it's a Song Mike's office chair gaming chair with high back molded foam padded seat. I'm curious as to what she thinks about this because I think some of the gaming chairs out there are actually designed pretty good and some of them might just be cheap versions out there. I don't know what this is. It has a lot of positive reviews, but again, positive reviews on Amazon. Who knows where they came from? So I'm looking forward to hearing her report about this and I don't think we're going to actually hear it until they move. So it'll be a few more weeks until we hear anything from Steph. But Steph, thanks you very much for dropping that in our Discord. We had Yakko.org, Jeremy Dennis, say, I predicted before we recorded last night that the major, the major convention we follow was going to reschedule or cancel their July show in Toronto. They did tonight. Thankfully, we record on Sundays to release on Tuesday nights, so we were able to record something. I hate being a week late to news like that. Oh, that is so tough. We record the official Gunna Geek show on Mondays. All the big news drops on Tuesdays. It sucks. <laughs> and, and it's like Tuesday, like uh, late in the afternoon or something like that. We're like, oh, because if it was like Tuesday morning, we might have a chance at going in and, and maybe re-recording or something like that. But we've discovered long ago, just let it go. We'll we'll catch it the next week. We're not a daily podcast, so it's more like a weekly podcast. But this happened to me, not on Goody Geek, but on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. just last week, we got the news that agents of shield was coming out on the 27th of may and i'm publishing the episode that talks about it tomorrow which is the 29th of april so it's been a full week week and a half since that news dropped and that's supposed to be your main topic of our show it's it's tough <gasps> Uh, and lastly, uh, we actually got tagged in the podcast community just today um, on Facebook. There was someone named April that had said, uh, hey, y'all, I'm really wanting to start a podcast. However, I know zero people who host their own podcast. I need a lot of help. I have zero clue where to begin. Where is the best place for me to start? 
any articles for starting a podcast. And we had someone named John who tagged us and he had recommended that April listen to our first eight episodes and uh, had said that we give good info on how to start. And while a few years old, what we say is still pretty relevant. So really cool to see you tag us in that. Thanks so much, John. And uh, glad that that content keeps helping people on. You know, we we thought long and hard about how to start off this podcast. And uh, we wanted to start off this podcast with talking about how to start a podcast. And it looks like it worked out, SP. Might as well retire now. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'd been talking about when we're going to revise those episodes. So we have a plan in place for when we are going to redo those episodes. When he fires and, me. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not true. Uh, so we will be redoing the topics of those episodes, maybe in a different order. We'll see in the future sometimes until then. Those first six, eight episodes, they're fantastic. Even today, especially episode number one, talking about the topic. So many times I hear people talking about, I want to start a podcast. And then what should I talk about? Well, that actually should be your first thing that you think about, not podcast, but topic, and then go from there. And I know it's something that I struggled with. And I remember talking about it in episode one. And then I do listen to it from time to time because we talk about how episode ones are never the best episode. So I just remind myself of even how we started this show, which admittedly, episode one was not our best episode. No. So if you got something you want to say to us, we would love to hear from you. You can email us to podcast at betterpodcasting.com. Tweet us at betterpod. Head on over to facebook.com slash betterpodcasting or come to our Discord server. There's a lot of fun over there at betterpodcasting.com slash Discord. Now, before we go, uh, we're going to turn the tone a little bit somber here, a lot somber, I should say, because of the fact that we do want to say farewell to a long term listener and friend of the podcast, Mike Howard. Uh, you might be familiar with Mike Howard. He go, went by the name, uh, nickname JPEG to Raw in many chats, did the podcast JPEG to Raw. And Mike was someone that we both regularly talked to about podcasting. And so we wanted to acknowledge here that unfortunately, Mike Howard has passed away. He had been battling cancer for a while and he did pass away. And he was someone who was so regularly in our chat. And I have to say, when we started this show, when we started, we didn't do live chats for the first little bit. And we were doing them on the Gunna Geek show and Mike was there. And then we decided we were going to start doing it here. And I was a little worried. I was a little worried because we were still getting our our feet, finding our feet with better podcasting. And now we're going to add the live element. And what if nobody showed up? And I'm trying to do a video show as well and make it look good and things like that. And And I remember Mike being in the chat and giving us support. And I remember his approval just feeling a a it lifted a weight off my shoulders because I knew he had very similar passions to me with doing video and whatnot. And the fact that he was there supporting us and, you know, helping share the, the challenges that I had uh, at that time, you know, I was really pushing my equipment hard at that time and, and just being a support at that time, it still resonates with me. And so I, I'm very, very sad that we lost Mike. Mike was one of the only two podcasters when we started Better Podcasting that had more monitors than you, Stephen. He had eight monitors, and at the time, I think you had six. I was jealous. And, <laughs> and, and it was, I think I, I have no idea what happened to the studio, if it's still existing right now or not, if the family has taken it down or he took it down as things progressed or not. But yeah, he had eight monitors in his studio. And I, I had a chance to see it online and it was great. He had the nicest demeanor to him. I, I heard him go off on a couple of things, but even when he was going off, you knew it was Mike Howard, the nice guy. It was incredible to know him and it was incredible to talk to him. I have been messaging him back and forth the last few months. And unfortunately, due to... Uh, the stay at home orders. I wasn't able to get down and see him and I will always regret that, but it was on his wishes. He did not want to me to go down there and he said he'd just be too tired. So I abided by his wishes and I just wish I would have had even 
a couple of minutes with him in person is one of the things we're in this digital community and some people you just never actually meet in person. He was one of the people that I, I wanted to meet in person. And I know that it's a difficult time for his family. And I just want to say to, to his family that Mike was an incredible influence on us. He was an incredible influence on podcasting and his name says it all JPEG to raw. So basically he was transitioning people to take raw photos, not the JPEGs that you get, but raw photos. And then you're able to do so much with them behind the scenes. He is the second person that has tried to transform me to taking raw photos. And I haven't yet, but I do intend on trying to dabble with that this summer, especially with my drone flights. He was a fellow drone pilot as well. And he, he loved the outdoors and it's just going to be a different world without Mike, but I am so grateful that I got a chance to know him. It really enlightened me in, in podcasting to know that Mike Howard was always there and I will always miss him. So I just want to say thank you to Mike. If you're listening out there, really appreciate you being a part of this show, being a part of our audience as we were a part of your audience. And I hope that someday soon we can do that great collaboration podcast up in the sky. So on that note, for episode 224 of Better Podcasting, I'm Stephen John Drew saying, Mike, we will miss you. Farewell, Mike. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for checking out another episode of Better Podcasting. You can find the full back catalog of Better Podcasting at betterpodcasting.com. If you're into geeky podcasts, please check out the other podcasts on the Gunna Geek Network at gunnageeknetwork.com. This show was produced and edited by Stephen John Drew of Gunna Geek Productions. Voice work was done by L.W. Salinas. Thanks again for listening or watching, and we hope to see you again next week.